Friends, let's put our hands together for Mr. Virgilio Santos. I'd like to uh, put uh, us now in perspective. Uh, a lot of uh, speakers have uh, discussed uh, several topics, and Mr. John Lee also has uh, uh, given us a lot of information which are very optimistic and I think would uh, spell a lot of, uh, of challenges for the space out there. So, he has uh, talked about a certain segment of the whole uh, space realm and uh, would like to see where the other uh, portions of this realm would go uh, in the future. Um, at this point, I'd like to give some uh, historical background not really to uh, reveal my age, but uh, just to give you some insights on how we started uh, with the space technology and applications here in the country. Uh, way back in uh, the 70s, I was a researcher at the Natural Resources Management Center, which was uh, later on uh, integrated with the National Mapping Resource Information Authority. We were doing a lot of applications in uh, using satellite images. And, um, and um, during that time also, uh, the other applications in satellite technology, such as satellite meteorology, uh, navigation and positioning, uh, satellite communications were also uh, developing their own uh, growth, uh, setting their own growth and direction. You know? And uh, several years later that when I was uh, uh, stationed in the United Nations, in the regional office. I was just uh, looking at how Thailand then was also, well, was also venturing to uh, outer space. So, uh, that time I was, I was struck by how the government was providing support in terms of space technology de development. They sent their brightest and uh, most uh, dynamic students to Surrey University in the UK and uh, learn the ropes and the, the technology and skills in uh, developing uh, small satellites, CubeSats and so on. And uh, later on, when they finally launched their own remote sensing satellite or Earth observation satellite, I was uh, admiring them, I was just in awe. And of course, uh, with a bit of envy from my own country, I was thinking when that uh, situation would happen here in the Philippines, but moving fast forward, fast forward, I think now the Philippines, with the support being given by by Department of Science and Technology, is uh, taking off in terms of uh, this uh, uh, development in space uh, technology and its applications. And before, when I was with the government, I was just only dreaming. I could only dream about. Uh, having our own ground sealing station. At the time, uh, one ground sealing station was too much, you know, I mean, it's very expensive and we couldn't really afford it. Of course, we wouldn't want to go the way of uh, such developing countries <laughs> such as Bangladesh, which suffered a lot in terms of not being able to sustain their own ground sealing stations. But here we are now, we're trying to, to move forward, uh, linking all the support and uh, assistance and uh, and all the sectors that will be able to uh, to uh, give their best uh, efforts at the moving uh, space technology towards the right direction. So where we are now, we are of course uh, looking at uh, space technology and its applications. And me being a remote sensing technologist, would like to see this uh, sector or this application sector uh, move the way that. Uh, the aerospace and aviation industry has moved forward. I think uh, the experience uh, being, uh, being uh, done by AIAP and uh, the, the, the members could give us some insight as to what kind of uh, direction the future uh, space technology uh, development would go. Um, now we're looking at uh, where the developments in uh, satellite uh, remote sensing and uh, the other speakers earlier have also indicated 
what particular aspects of development uh, space technology would go to. You know? uh, we are GS Spectrum Marketing uh, partner with uh, some some uh, space uh, suppliers or uh, technology suppliers or developers. Uh, now we're also into uh, using constellation satellites, using small satellites or CubeSats for the matter, so that we will be able to launch a lot of, of uh, computers or satellites out there and generate the data that we would be needing for a lot of applications. Uh, our partner, Planet, uh, based in the United States, uh, at any one time would have about 170 or so uh, satellites, both uh, medium and high resolution satellites and that. So with this number of satellites in orbit, for example, we are able to provide users with daily coverage of data, uh, which means for medium resolution satellite, we can provide two uh, satellite images in the morning and two satellite images in the afternoon. Uh, this is already a marketing. So this particular slide just shows you not a model, not a prototype of uh, Planet Scope, which is one of our satellites in, uh, in the constellation. This is the actual size you know, of the satellite in orbit. So based on that, uh, our partners are able to develop and uh, manufacture a huge number of satellites and they launch it in batches. Just a couple of months ago, in uh, November and December, they were able to launch 33 satellites in all, uh, in a matter of two months. You know? And uh, this added also to the constellation number. So based on that, uh, whenever there are some, uh, some satellites that, uh, uh, that uh, fail or su suffer some malfunction, there is enough uh, number of uh, satellites to replace those. So, um, where are we headed for now in terms of uh, satellite uh, remote sensing? It's not only a matter of uh, doing the, the hardware and the software and the facility for data acquisition, but it's a matter of uh, processing the data. You know? With developments in machine learning, in AI, in data analytics, these are the trends that we are doing right now in the country in terms of uh, using satellite imagery, we are not only distributing satellite imagery, but we are processing them in huge uh, volumes. And a lot of, uh, of uh, help could be uh, uh, received or, or uh, uh, invited from the academe and the NGOs in the other sectors of society. So these are what sample products that uh, we are able to derive or generate from uh, using various analytics and uh, machine, machine processing tools for applications in satellite image. So this will be my last slide. So, what is this? This is actually another segment of uh, space technology which we, are, we haven't experienced yet here in the Philippines and we might not be able to experience in our lifetime, or at least in my lifetime. Uh, what is this? This is a space plane. You know? uh, Mr. Diaz already talked about the aircraft and aviation industry. We're talking about satellite uh, space technology. Uh, oh, sorry. So this is uh, VSS Unity. It's not my name initials, no? but Virgin Space Ship <laughs> Unity, which is a commercial space plane being launched by Virgin Galactic of the United States. And this is one area which perhaps we could also dream of in the future. That uh, with experience of the aircraft and aviation industry and the developments in, uh, in space technology in the Philippines, the, the, the middle realm no, in um, uh, bridging uh, the, the aviation aircraft industry with space technology is already happening in the U.S. No? In the uh, middle of this year, I think, or early summer, they would be already uh, uh, setting the, 
the flight. No, uh, there are about 600 uh, people in waiting who are willing to uh, um, shell out 250 thousand dollars each. So you can imagine the business uh, opportunity. Right? So, but we could just dream about it right now. But dreaming is free anyway. So let's just go and dream and uh, support each other for development of space science and technology. Thank you very much.